like I always say, two's better than one. <laughs> Where do you want me to brand him? Pick a spot. You weren't aiming to drive that buggy across my property, were you? I asked you a question, boy. Bruto, stupido, hijo de burro. Dile a este animal que tenemos prisa. Debemos llegar a casa, se hace tarde. You got something to say, lady, say it in English. Time you folks started to... Bert. Hadley? Them. Cutting across my land. Well, now, that is funny. Last time I looked, this was Barkley land. Another 20 yards, and it's ours. It is only because we are late, senor, because we come from the railroad, and Don Alfredo will worry. That's not my problem, lady. That's yours. And Montero ain't gonna use my place for no road, just like you stole it already. Now, uh, he won't be stealing it if the court rules it's his, now, will he? Well, the court ain't ruled for him yet. And it won't make any difference if it does. Because Mel and Dave and the rest of us, we bought our land. It's ours. And it's gonna stay that way. And we don't want no Spanish on it. You're welcome to cut across our land. That might save you some time. Oh, that's right, sir. This road goes right through our north pasture. You can use it if you like. Luis? Si, sí, senorita. Let's go. I would thank both you gentlemen if I knew your names. A Nick. A Van Heath. A Barkley. Thank you both. Thank you very much. We'd be glad to say you're welcome if we knew your name. Maria Montero. Don Alfredo is my father. you in such low spirits this evening. Low sp <laughs> Well, Nick, you seem to be in a particularly good mood tonight. Is that so? Thank you. Mother, may I? Yes, please, a little sherry. Audra, did you finish your book? Almost, just one more chapter. Well, how nice to have you all down so early. You know, your father always believed that the family should have a few minutes of relaxation together before dinner. Thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. This was his favorite time of day. Mm-hmm. Keith, you should have been here. It was wonderful. I used to sit on his lap and the boys on the floor, and he'd tell us all about the old days. Things you simply couldn't believe. Well, remember how you got your first fur coat? For a dozen cabbages. Cabbages? Mm-hmm. Really? The Russians brought their boat up the river and traded furs for cabbages. Well, they were sick and needed greens, and the Spaniards wouldn't have anything to do with them. Father said that Don Alfredo was the worst, being descended from royalty and all. I, uh... Never knew Don Alfredo had a daughter. Well, it seems to me I remember hearing something about an only child. Yes, Maria. He sent her back east to school when her mother died. She was only four years old. Don't you remember she... No, no, I don't suppose you would. He never brought her to town. Why do you ask? Is she back? No. Uh, well... 
Uh-huh. She's back. Have you met her yet? Well, I wouldn't exactly say we met her. Uh, Bert Hadley stopped her carriage, wouldn't let him cross his land. And... Oh, Bert Hadley's a fool. I'll buy that for sure. Why, is she that pretty? Well, uh... Is she really? Is she, Nick? Well, if you, if, not as if you cotton to someone that's all skin and bones. Is she tall, short, dark, fair? And what kind of clothes? From the East? Oh, are they beautiful? Well, I don't know where they came from, but they look real good to me. Well, Mother, aren't you curious? Of course, but it's like a petticoat. A lady never lets it show. Was Bert Hadley nasty with the girl? He had his rough up real good. Which will upset her father, of course. Does it matter? Well, it might. If his case holds up in court, we might have to deal with him. You don't think his case can hold up, do you? I don't know. His lawyers keep hinting about some new evidence. But I'll find out about all that when I get back to San Francisco. In the meantime, I wish Hadley hadn't done anything to antagonize Don Alfredo. Why don't we pay Don Alfredo a visit, just to smooth things over? Good idea. Oh, now, wait a minute. It was Hadley that got out of line, not us. Why not him? Well, it still wouldn't do any harm. I'll ride over in the morning. You may have something there. I'll tell you what. We'll uh, both ride over in the morning, get an early start. But I wouldn't want to take you from your work, Nick. Oh, I can manage. Well, there's all that mesquite to burn out it's on the... better to take care of that before. in the afternoon. It's too windy in the morning. And like you said, two is better than one. Well, I'm glad that's settled. Shall we have dinner? Tell me, what's your little bit of my heart? Oh, I Dave, come and tell me. No question, huh? Found him this morning with them heifers. Must have jumped the fence last night. Send all the way to Ohio for them Holsteins. Read them true. Start a dairy yard. One lousy off bull from Ontario's range could set us back a whole year. Dave, go get me a rifle. <laughs> Nick, you go ahead. Don Alfredo, por favor. Un momento, señor. Managed to say hello. Oh, forgive me. Hello. If I remember, your name would be Maria Montero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, my good young friend. Don Alfredo. It has been too long. I'm afraid you take all this legal business too seriously. Well, some others do too, I'm afraid. You mean yesterday? Those men? Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd like to apologize. For what, senor? You only helped to 
So why should you take this long ride for them? Well, I guess we feel kind of responsible. You see, Hadley and those men, they used to work for us. And my father sold them that section of land. But that particular section was not his. And so, of course, it's not theirs. Ah, but he sold it and they bought it in good faith. My father had a very deep feeling for that land. Your father felt very deeply about everything, even when he was wrong. <laughs> Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara. Montero. Montero. Evelia. Evelia. Maria Lopez Santa Barbara, Montero, Evelia. Oh, howdy. I was just getting used to Montero. We only use Montero now. We're American. Lucky for you. And lucky for me. After all, it is a lot easier just to say Miss Maria Montero. Take a name like mine. Couldn't do much with that. A name like yours you wouldn't ever touch. You keep it the way it came to you. My father says the Barclays are. Uh, look, will you be coming into Stockton Saturday? Well, I mean, you being American and all, I figure you might want to cut loose a little. I cut loose? For the 4th. The 4th of July. Oh, yes, of course. Be fireworks and games and supper and dancing. Be real fun, if you can steer clear of the speech, Megan. <laughs> be fun for me, too, if you could come along. I'd like to. I really would. I'll ask my father. I am saying, senor, how many are there? This Hadley and the rest? Seven? Eight? Sixteen hundred acres at most, and we are talking about thousands. Well, those sixteen hundred acres are more important to them than the thousands we might lose. Of course. And I tell you, they will not lose them. I have no wish to hurt these men. If the court rules for me, I will make some arrangement. You still figure to win after two years, huh? My lawyer still looks for the original grant. <laughs> but I think that in any case, I cannot lose, as long as our families remain good friends. Well, now, you can just count on that. <laughs> Saturday? I'll try. Father, this is he, the other one who helped us. How do you do, sir? Senor? He uh, came to live with us. He's been away. Yes, I have heard. Well, if you will excuse us now, senor. Montero! Montero! We brung you one of your bulls. I am grateful, senor, but I think he'd be happier on the ranch. Why'd you keep him there? Not let him jump no fence into somebody's corral. Yours? His. But I'm partners in them two heifers. Heifers? Holsteins. Purebred all the way from Ohio. Took close to three years to put by the money for him. We're aiming to breed him for milk. Build up to some. Fella in Napa's got a blooded bull. And this. Lousy mixed breed got to him first. I'm sorry about that, but uh, why do you bring him here? We're going to leave him here. We're going to teach you a lesson. That will not be necessary. I have your rifle, senor. Senor. I understand how you feel, senor. To keep a line pure is a sacred trust. It isn't like it used to be. The world changes. This is new. This isn't Mexico or Spain. You make me out to be blind or unfeeling. I didn't mean that. I only mean that things are different now. 
Girls aren't held under lock and key with some fat old duane yet to report every breath. Well, what can she report if you do nothing wrong? She is only there so you will not forget. You have an old and honored name. The Barclay name is honored, too, all through the valley. And they're rich. They may even be richer than... Querida, there are more important things than riches. When the Barclays first moved in and settled their lands, our family had been here for 50 years. But that's what I mean. It doesn't make any difference who was here first or last or how long. It's not important now. We're all the same. We are not the same. Aren't we Americans? Isn't that why you sent me east? All that long, lonely time away. Wasn't it so I could learn how the Americans spoke and lived and thought? So I could be like them? Isn't that what you wanted? Of course. Of course, I wish that for you. Just as my father wished it for me. You should have seen him that night, Maria. When Fremont's rabble swarmed over the house like ants, they ate my father's food, they drank his wine, and then they pointed their guns and said, sign the surrender. <laughs> he had to write it for them. They did not know how. And when he signed his name, they just made their marks. But he signed his name to the future that night. He knew that the old times were gone, and he was glad. He knew that better times were coming. He knew how great and how strong this country would be. Then shouldn't we celebrate with the others? Shouldn't we go to Stockton on Saturday? Perhaps, if it means so much to you. Father, I know you'll enjoy it. <laughs> I love you very much. <laughs> coming next. It's the match you all been looking to. The championship. Yeah. Now it's one fall, winner take all, including lumps, bumps, and fire your own. <laughs> now here they are, sort of keeping it the family this year, the Barclay brothers, Nick 
and he. All right, all right. Gentlemen, come to the center of the ring for your instructions. Now I want clean holds, no finger bending, and both shoulders to the boards for a count of three. There'll be no thumbing, gouging, chewing, or chawing. Or I'll tell your minds to take a broom to the both of you. <laughs> now, lads, have a go at it, and the winner has to buy me a beer. Don Alfredo. Senora. I think we might crowd them. What a lovely day it's been. There's nothing like the 4th of July. There's nothing like this 4th of July. No. Something wrong? I don't have a fork. Oh, I'll fix that. Here, take mine. I'll be right back. Take good care of her, huh? I was sure I picked up a form. Heath, you didn't. About the only chance I had. You were going to tell me something. It's about the wrestling. I feel so guilty. I know I made you lose if I hadn't called to you. Kind of glad you did. Just knowing you worried is worth the fall. You been doing any writing lately? Every chance I get. Almost every day. Steering clear of Hadley's place? Yes. I usually take the North Ridge. For a fact. Now, that's a funny thing. I have to be riding over that way myself. Say, about 2 o'clock? I don't know. Perhaps I wasn't planning on taking a ride. Maria. Father. Well, uh, where is Angelina? She was to be with you. I am too fat, senor. I, uh, there was no room for me at the table. Tell your friends, adios, we are leaving now. No, but she hasn't finished eating. She will not go hungry, senor. Father, just a little while. We haven't seen all the fireworks. Maria!
Don Alfredo, you're not leaving already. I must be up very early tomorrow. I may be called to San Francisco. On pleasure, I hope. No, on business, senora. I've just had a telegram from my lawyers. They have secured a copy of the original land grant. They found it finally in Monterey. And? It supports my claim. The land is mine, senora. Maria. They, uh, they're leaving already? So are we. Would you and Heath get the carriage, please? All right. Obvious, but perhaps dangerous. Dangerous? To like something too much. Where will you ride today? On the North Ridge. Again? The fourth day in a row. I enjoy it, Father. Querida, you are all I have in this world. You must know how much you mean to me. I love you, too. Then think of the trust that rests with you, all the generations that have gone before. If you love me, think what you do to me. If you continue to see this young man. I don't know what you think or why. I've done nothing wrong. I will do nothing wrong. You'll have to take my word for it. Querida. I know who I am. I know what we are. But in these times, you must realize there are other families, such as the Barclays, that are as honored and respected as ours. to try and look inside. I'll tell you anything you want. I don't know anything about you, really. Anything. Well, you call it, I've been there. You name it, I've done it. Like what? Well, like digging for wages on the mother load, fishing for salmon and crab off the Golden Gate, J.U. to down country stage for six months, and then scattered Apaches for a wagon train. Of course, after that, I had some tough jobs, like... Why? Your father was rich. Yeah, he was rich, all right. Then why did you have to work so hard? Keith? I'd rather talk about you. There isn't much. Oh, no, you don't. You don't sell me that. Back east somewhere in some la -de da school. All those dudes in fancy coats, and all those parties and things. And loneliness. And crying yourself to sleep, and feeling lost because you didn't belong someplace. Someone. Waiting for someone to come along. Someone big and strong. Well, I'm big and I'm strong. Handsome, I'd say, if the light's not too strong. You know, you look like your mother. You do, you really do. It's the eyes, I think, or... You never saw my mother. But Mrs. Barclay. 
He's not my mother. Tom Barkley and my mother were never married. And you don't have to look if the light's too strong. The light's just right. And I find you very attractive. A bit short-tempered, perhaps. Say, won't you come in, please? Ah, gracias. Don Alfredo, how very nice. Senora. As my husband used to say, something to settle the dust. Thank you, nothing. Well, then. No, if you don't mind. Ah. I've had word from my son, Jared, in San Francisco. He confirms what you told me about the land grant. He said the court will enter formal judgment today. Yes. Well, then we have nothing to discuss, if you're so sure to win. There are other things. The land we sold to Mr. Hadley and the others? Well, you always led us to believe you'd sell the homesteads back to us. And I hope you don't drive too hard a bargain. No, perhaps we do not have to bargain at all. Perhaps you need not lose and I need not win. <laughs> well, this is a lesson we learned from history. Sometimes the threat of war can be resolved by uh, diplomacy, a strategic union. A marriage. Why not? Our properties are close together. They would be joined someday in one great holding. And it would take care of so many other problems. There's 1,600 acres and the rest of the disputed land, which has caused so much trouble between us. I see. You've uh, discussed this with Maria, of course. I assure you, senora, she will do as I say. And not find it too difficult. It's obvious she was attracted to Heath. She will marry the other. And if she wants Heath? Well, this can be arranged. I know that your family has interests all over the state. You could send him south, shall we say, on business. Keep him away for a year. Young people, believe me, <laughs> they soon forget. Thank you for coming. You do not approve? What made you think I would? But why do you risk so much for him? He is not yours. As much as the others. But he does not carry your blood. He carries my husband's. Senora, I beg you to consider the consequences, not just for yourself, but for the others. Mr. Hadley and the rest? You've committed yourself to some sort of arrangement. We will talk arrangements after the boy has gone. Forgive me, Don Alfredo. I always rest at this time. Silas will see you out. Go into town tonight? To send a telegram to Jared. It's certainly taking him long enough. Perhaps he stopped to socialize. You mean to have a drink? No, Mother, it's my turn. Oh. I wish he hadn't gone to bed so early. He always gives me a better game. Well, Heath gets up somewhat earlier than you do. Perhaps he feels that sleep is more important than cards. This is hardly the proper time. I ain't got time for manners, ma'am. Tom Barkley always kept telling us to plant today and harvest tomorrow. Always figure ahead. Okay. We figured ahead. You know what we harvest? A notice to vacate. 
Don Alfredo has the right if the land is his. It ain't his. It's still with a court. Were you saying that it's finished? That he's won? But you won't lose. We'll give you other land. Who's going to give us back 10 years of sweat and cold and doing without? Fighting the land like a, was fighting something live. Breaking it to seed and bush and tree. We'll give you help. I don't want no help. I just want what's mine. We don't know that it's final. We'll have a telegram from Jared tomorrow. Nick said that everything was going to be all right. He said that Montero had promised to work something out. He did. Well, then why did he do this? There got to be some reason. I don't hear you saying nothing. You don't have to say it. We all know what it is. What did he mean, Mother? Does it matter? Well, of course it matters. I'll tell you why. It's on account of Maria and me. Jared says the land grant goes back a hundred years. No way for us or anybody else to know when we settled in this valley. Ain't that just fine? We take the short end. Ten years of hard work ground into the dust on account of the Spanish wants to hit Heath. Oh, now, wait a minute, Hadley. That ain't too hard to figure. It's all over town. Montero wants to keep him away from the girl, and we're all he's got to bargain with. I said, wait a minute. Eight of us and one of him. And nobody waltzing in here out of nowhere. Shut up. A nothing. A mongrel pup side when your pa was drunk. Hold it! Hold it! The Spanish takes his land. But he gets it just the way it come to us. Bare and dry and nothing on it. Montero. I'm sorry, senor. Wait. Montero! Senor. Montero! Miguel, Guillermo, I will not need you. Luis, buy and save. Last night, those notices to vacate, they were on account of me, weren't they? I knew you would not listen to me. I thought you might be concerned for them. That's a mean thing to do, to hurt good men for a personal grudge. I assure you, senor, this is not personal. Then what? When a matter of family is concerned... Don't talk family to me! I've got blood in me as good as any. My dear young friend, I wonder if Maria has told you that her family goes back almost 800 years to men who rode in the Crusades, sailed the great ships, ruled half the world in the name of Spain. Maria owes something to them, to all who came before and to all who will come after. She owes it to them to pass on her heritage as pure as it was when she received it herself. Let her go. All I ask is if you let her go, senor, if she really means something to you. And what about her, if I mean something to her? 
What can you give her? Love? Yes. But love soon passes with youth. Wealth? I'm afraid she will have all she needs from me. A name? A name that is only half yours, and only through the kindness of Senora Barclay? No, no, Senor, you must let her go. I will send her away. She is very young, she will soon forget. And when she has been in the East for a while... Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! I'm not going East. I'm going to the North Ridge to ride. I'm going with you now. Oh, no, Maria. Please, Heath. If you've meant what you've said to me. Please. Could have been so good. I loved you so much. I saw Hadley and the rest of them all pure out of their minds. They're going to burn out their places. Well, you get some kind of notion you can get Montero to change his mind? Well, I can give it a try. Well, you're going to have to yell across 800 years. Then let's see what we can do with Hadley. Come on. Getting on to finish. If I your place next. Is that the last? I don't remember sending out any invitations. Well, now we just can't sit by and watch a man eat poison, now can we? We know what we're doing. It makes about as much sense as a five-legged mule. Now, right now, I'd say... We're not asking you. Or her. You two done a bang-up job, all right. Leaving eight decent, hard-working families with no roof over their head. Wiping out ten years of dreams, just like there never was. I suppose you get on with your business. Let us get on with ours. I'm sorry, but right now it looks like we've got the same business. I told you to get. Now I'm ordering you. Now, wait a minute, Hadley, hold it. You burn your place and there's a chance a good part of this valley going with it, you know. That so-called brother, you should have thought of that. You can't do it, Hadley. You aiming to stop me? We're aiming to try. Either one of you swing one leg off your horse. And you are dead.
You hear me, Spanish. I'm going to tell you what I told them. If you try to stop me, there's going to be fireworks. Senor. Wait. I gambled, senor, and I lost. I will make arrangements. You will keep your places. And you, do what you will. It would be wrong not to say goodbye. He's my father. I can't destroy him. You will forget. You must, because I want you to forget. Because I love you so much. Kiss you. Uh, <laughs> music! Hey, what about me? I'd like that piece in the middle there. Get it yourself. I want it. To... Uh, this dance was promised to me. Oh. Uh, 
Well, thank you, big brother. Well, Hattie, you should have been a surgeon. Better let Silas do that. Yes. You don't look a day over 19. Jenny, you better watch this man. If he keeps up that flattery, I'm liable to believe him. <laughs> Evan, it's nice having you back and nice having you here. Thank you, Mrs. Barkley. It's nice being here. You came home last night. We didn't thank you in mind if you came along with us. I'm delighted. So that's our drive. She's changed a little since you saw her the last time. Indeed, she has. <laughs> Come and have some cake, Jenny. Seems like only yesterday, Audra and I were children. Oh, she could ride so well and run so fast, I sometimes forget she was a girl. There ain't nobody gonna mistake her for a boy now. What are you waiting for? Go get her before I... Excuse me. Yeah, I cut it. Excuse me. You're looking at me as though I... I'm so surprised. Pleasantly surprised? Yes. Yes, I think so. Very pleasant. Oh, I would have missed your birthday party for anything. How's college? You know, the last time we were this close, you... you slapped me. I was a child. We were both children. Happy birthday, Audra. Jenny, stop looking at them like that. We shouldn't have brought him, Wally. Well, stop it, Jenny. He's my son, our son. And I'm not locking him away in no attic. May I have the pleasure of this dance? I thought you'd never ask me. <laughs> Good evening, Jared. Wally, how are you? What have you been up to? Aside from being too busy to visit an old friend now and then? <laughs> My apologies, Wally. I uh, haven't been able to see anyone. I've been so busy on a trial in San Francisco. One of the biggest ranches in California, you messing around in law books. Don't tell me your troubles. <laughs> how nice to see Evan. Has he finished college yet? No, oh, he quit. With my advice and consent. Oh, I thought you were the one who was so keen on a college education. I've got a big ranch and just one son to leave it to. I decided he could get all the education he needs by running my ranch right here. <laughs> well, you're probably right at that. I'm sure it'll work out. It will. I know Evan was a kind of a wild kid, but maybe no more so than uh, you and Nick. You cut up a little bit in your time. <laughs> oh, indeed we did. Let me tell you something. When I was Evan's age, I was a kind of a wild kid myself. It takes a good woman. Sometimes that's the answer, Jerry. A good woman. Uh, I think she's still a bit young for matchmaking, Wally. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> Anyways, they seem to be doing all right by themselves. What would you do if I were to kiss you right now? I'd probably slap your face again. Oh, it would be worth it. Evan. Evan, would you be a dear and get me some punch, please? Oh, ask me to climb Mount Everest, slay the mighty dragon, swim the Just Hellespont. Just some punch. I'll wait right here. Thank you. 
so warm in there. I thought I'd come out. For a breath of fresh air, of course. It's spiked, you know. What did you do that for? No slap? Well, then, happy birthday, Audra. That's enough, Evan. Oh, no, sweetheart. Not nearly enough. I wouldn't go back. Evan! this date for a long time, Audra. And oh, how much sweeter for the waiting. <coughs> I'm screaming, I don't want to hurt you. <coughs> don't <I> <coughs> Stop it! <coughs> Stop it, Eve! It's all my fault! <coughs> what happened? Hey, Evan, what happened? Boy, that little Nick. Oh, <coughs> All right, Paul. Just a little misunderstanding. I'm afraid your son got out of line. Did he now? What happened, Audra? Not now, Wally. Did he drag you I in here? I said not now. Victoria, I'm sorry. You're sorry. The way I see it, the apologies are owed us. Sometimes girls get what they ask. Wally, for. I'll overlook that remark. Wally, the party's over. Looks like it. Come on, Jenny. Evan? <gasps> oh! Happy birthday, Audra. We were never properly introduced, huh? I guess we know each other now, don't we? I go to bed. It's late. I couldn't sleep. Well, I couldn't either. But I don't think there's anything to worry about. Evan just went a little bit too far, and Audra brought him up short, but with a slight assist from Heath. I wish it were that simple. Well, I think it will be. Wally's just quick to get up ahead of steam. He'll be all right after he's had a night to think on it. I know Wally and Jenny better than you do. Well, maybe longer. Well, I know Wally's quick to anger, but this is the first time in over 25 years of friendship they've left our home without saying goodbye. Yes, but you forget this is about Evan, and Wally's never been able to think very straight when it comes to him. You know, Wally and Jenny had a working ranch when your father and I first arrived in this valley, and we were more than just neighbors reaching out to help each other. Much more. I remember the night you were born. Jenny was sick. She was never a physically strong woman. Anyhow, you weren't due for about two weeks, and your father was in town on business. A few hours after he left, the first pain started. I was alone in the house. We didn't have any help in those days. And out of a clear blue, here comes Wally. He said that Jenny's illness was not that serious, but babies. Well, you couldn't count on babies keeping a schedule. <laughs> and he, he rode over just in case. He took me to the doctor, but we never made it. We got as far as their ranch, and between the three of us, we managed to deliver a son. I had no idea. I see I'm not the only one who can't get to sleep. Well, I, for one, am going to try. Good night, Mother. Good night. Good night, sweetheart.
Mother, do you think maybe I'm to blame for what happened? Should I? I don't know. When we were dancing, I, I thought how nice that Evan was back. And yet there was something strange about him. That's what confuses me. I wanted him to kiss me. And I arranged it so we could be alone. I didn't feel that I was doing anything wrong, but, but at the same time, I wasn't sure. So for that much, I am to blame. But the rest of it... Maybe I'm to blame for that, too. Well, if I hadn't felt so cold inside, so, so repelled, I think that's what angered him. I think he knew what I was feeling. Oh, Mother, tell me what to do. I think I should apologize, and, and still I don't honestly feel I've done anything wrong. What should I do? I know what we both should do. It's been a long day and an even longer night. Let's get some sleep. flowers. Oh, Jenny. Oh, I'm so glad. Even if it wasn't your place to come here. Oh, nonsense. The only thing that's important is to get this settled and as quickly as possible. Thank you. How is Audra? Oh, she's still a bit upset, but fine. I'll get some coffee. I made some cakes. Jenny, before you go, as close as we've been, as much as we've meant to each other. I would never have come here today, but Audra and I talked... Well, as I was saying, Audra and I talked it over, and, and she feels that she was to blame. Well, Victoria, this started out to be a very bad day, but you've brightened it considerably. Well, I guess maybe we could all use a good hot cup of coffee now. Don't forget the cakes. No hard feelings? No. I didn't sleep two winks last night. <laughs> I didn't either. None of this would have happened if not for Heath. Maybe. But he's a headstrong boy, plunges in, asks questions later. Bet he feels a little foolish for the way he acted. I guess he thought he was protecting Audra. Protecting her? I guess what? Now, look, Victoria, I thought by now it'd be clear to you what happened. Wally, why don't we just let it drop? Audra has admitted that she may have led Evan on a bit. A bit? Audra's a mighty fetching little girl, and last night, well, it was obvious to anyone with eyes, any man's eyes, she was feeling like a woman, and Evan's a man. There, now, we've said our little piece, and it's over. I'm sorry, dear. We have an engagement. Where have you been, son? You got alcohol all over you. Well, looking over the boundaries of the ranch. That's what you want me to do today, isn't it, Pa? Uh, Mrs. Barkley, I, I don't know whether or not you feel you have an apology coming. It's but... all been taken care of, son. Oh, well. Well, I had the feeling maybe I, I owed you something. But I guess that's all taken care of now. Excuse me. See you soon, Jenny. Yep. Bye, Victoria. Ma. 
my, oh, my. What a pretty woman you are, Victoria. We well, thank you, Wally. She's a fine woman, Wally. I never realized until today just how fine. Yeah, her daughter was in the wrong, and Victoria admitted it. I think she's just giving us the benefit of the doubt. All right, Jenny. Wally, you promised me you'd talk to Evan. It's over. Not just about last night. Maybe that wasn't his fault. And maybe it's the beginning of more trouble. New trouble. For the love of heaven, Jenny, quit harping. You've got to talk to him. I've lost him, Wally. He's your son now. You've got to talk to him. We've got to give him a chance. That's what we decided when we brought him home, wasn't it? We've got to give him a chance to find himself. While he's doing that, how long do we wait, Wally? How many people have to get hurt? Evan, why don't you ride into Stockton tonight? A ranch man's got to smell a little perfume once in a while, right? <laughs> South section, it's gotta be bad. Wonder how Alkali got in there. The groundwater came up through and touched the vein of the stuff, I guess. And there's a, another water hole up in that path. We gotta get these horses to water. How far back? Oh, about three, four mile. There's a trail that goes through miles of spread in ours. It'll save a lot of climbing. Meanwhile, you better take care of these ponies. Thanks a lot. I'll see to it that a fence is put around the water hole. Horses won't drink it, but the cattle might. about? Well, offhand, I'd say it's uh, four strands of barbed wire. I presume you can read that sign there. Well, what's the idea? And then they didn't teach you to read. Wherever it is you grew up. As I understand, this path runs between our properties. No, no, the way I understand it, the Miles and Barkley ranches divide right here. Look, I've got a bunch of nervous, thirsty, and skittish horses here, and I'm taking them through to water up at the spring. Let's suppose you take that wire down. That's trespassing. Oh, look, uh, I'm a reasonable man. If the Barclays want to use it, have them send someone over from the family to, uh, to reason with me. Audra do. Now, you look, I'm not taking these ponies five miles around just because of you. I've got a better idea.
I'm rounding up those ponies, and I'm coming through. Oh, my son, Miss Barkley. You're bleeding. You wanted to come to oh, my property. Oh, I never Let meant me to you. stop him. I, Let me you I just hurt. wanted to make sure he knew it was Please. our property. My well, son. you finally got the trouble you was asking for. Let and this time, him. it was no Please. part of Evan's doing. Evan. And I'll tell you something else. This time, we've got more than an apology coming in. By heaven, we're going to get it. Stop. On daylight, I'd think I was dreaming. A beautiful dream. Welcome to the Miles Ranch, Audra. Evan, we... we have to talk. Sure we do. In private. Evan, this... this trouble between our families started with us. And it can end with us. A happy ending? Maybe it was partly, maybe it was all my fault for giving you the wrong idea. Well, it was a very right idea. A beautifully right idea, if only that uh, dim-witted half-brother of yours. Evan, please, please, let's, let's not go over that again. It was a mistake, all of it. And now, well, now, if you'd, if you'd just come over and talk to my mother. Oh, gladly. What should we talk about? While I apologize to your parents. Am I hearing things? Are you suggesting that I apologize for kissing the most adorable, provocative. And here I thought you'd come on a mission of peace and love. All right, Evan, you, you don't have to apologize. Just, just come over and talk to my family. Oh, great. First it was your mother, now it's your family. Evan, it makes no sense pressing charges against Heath. Oh, it doesn't? He trespassed, destroyed private property. For that, you either shoot a man or you, you go to the sheriff. Heath can consider himself lucky my father chose to go to the sheriff. We've always used that path. I know that. But not anymore. As a matter of fact, my father is fencing off all our property. You will come over to settle this, won't you? Well, as I said before, why don't we... Uh... Settle this in private. I have to go now. Evan, let me go. All right, Audra. We'll leave it at that for now and, uh, and live to fight another day. All night. What was she doing here? Oh, she asked me to stop by the Barkley Ranch some night. Wants me to apologize. Well, it might not be a bad idea. Oh, she's a clever little minx, all right. She came over to tell me how sorry she is about everything. Well, come over to my place, Evan, and talk to Mother. Probably find Nick, Jared, and Eugene waiting to jump me the way Heath did. Audra would never do a thing like that. Oh, wouldn't she? Some Barkley cattle just took a stretch out of the new fence. Oh, no, those Barkleys would never do a thing like that, would they? Mount up!
Get your rifle! And you're holding three of our cows. That's right. They were your cows. Send them back. Not a chance. They busted down our fence. There'll be hell for damages. Wally, now don't act stupid. Those cows are our property. You send them back, or we'll come in and get them. You cross that line, and we'll start shooting. Don't come any further, Nick. I'm warning you. Forgive me, boy. I swear to you, Nick, I only meant to warn you off my land. Where'd that shot come from? Where'd it come from? Dr. Morris says he has to rest for a few days. There's some medicine we have to pick up in town. I'll get it. I was going in anyway. What about his arm? I'm afraid his arm will be out of action for a while. Well, I still got the use of both of mine. Nick, for the love of heaven, how do you think this is going to help Heath? If he had moved a couple inches, we'd be burying him. I know how it could have been, and the next time I know the how it may be... The next time, let it happen to them. Them? Them, Nick? Them, meaning Wally or Jenny or Evan? No. No, violence never solved anything. If your father had understood that, he would have been alive My today. father understood what he had to do. Mother, there are times when you have to fight no matter Nick, what it leads to. Listen to, to me. My father believed that, and I'm his son. You were his son, but he's dead. Now you're mine. And I'm asking you to honor my wishes. There will be no more bloodshed, Nick. No more. And come busting across that fence. It shouldn't have happened. Not for any reason. An accident. A crazy, stupid... It was an accident, I tell you. Jenny, you can not think I want to see that boy shot. Who did it, Wally? I don't know. Find out. Find out who did the shooting! Having a little fun. Oh. Us ranchers got to smell a little perfume once in a while, right, Pa? <laughs> you didn't ask about Heath Barkley. Oh, yeah. Well, how is it, dear boy? Well, he'll be laid up for a while, but the wound wasn't serious. That's too bad. Uh, I mean, about him being laid up a while. 
I've been asking around, trying to find out who fired that shot. Learning anything? Some of the men think it might have been you. Is that so? Don't see how they could tell that. All of us were shooting at your orders. The way the bullet hit. They say it couldn't come from anywhere but where you were standing. Well, it's possible. It's also possible it could have been a ricochet. Is that your opinion? Well, either it was an accident, a ricochet, or somebody was trying to kill Heath. A ricochet. Yeah, that's what I say happened. A ricochet. Come on, boy. However it happened, sir, it's time we ended this thing. Time we showed them we want to be good neighbors again. Uh, but, but the Barclays started it, Pa. But, but if you want... That's what I want. Yeah, that's what I want. I want to see this thing ended. Well, uh, I'll, be, I'll be glad to help you. You just tell me what you want me to do. Well, maybe... for a little while, anyways. Maybe it would be a good idea if you went away. Is that what you want? It's not a question of what I want, it's just till things calm down around here. It's not like I'm shipping you off again. It's just for a little while to San Francisco. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? Talk about smelling perfume once in a while. There's nothing wrong with San Francisco, is there? You'll pick up your train ticket this evening. But it's not like you're shipping me away again, is that it? San Francisco ain't school. You'll have lots of money. You need more? Sure, sure, everything I need. Just like always, everything I need. That's just fine, Paul. It's just fine. It's just... your sugar? wish that we become friends again. Kiss. Kiss and make up. <laughs> what, not even a kiss goodbye? I'm leaving the valley, Audra. Under fire, as it were, but leaving nonetheless. You and your brother sort of that. <laughs> oh, don't fight it. That's one thing I can teach you. What shall be, shall be. Don't, Evan. I'll scream! Of course you will. And you'll fight, and you'll kick. And you'll... My father taught 
talks about this kind of a woman's perfume. This medicine, him, it's for Heath. He's waiting. Let him wait. <laughs> I've been waiting too, Audra. <laughs> Since you kissed me, I've been waiting too. <laughs> oh, <sweetie. laughs> Don't do that, Audra. I beg of you. Don't do that. <laughs> you must not scream. I want to be gentle. Please let me be gentle. You shouldn't have done that, Audra. Why did you have to do that? Because you smiled at him, a woman's smile. I let him kiss me. He'd be alive if he hadn't. <laughs> now you listen to me. I won't let you blame yourself any more than I blame myself. I've asked myself over and over, what else could I have done? The, the truth is, the, the fault isn't in you, it isn't in me. It was in that boy. Oh. If only I could make Wally and Jenny understand. Jenna, Wally, I, I would have given my you life... You killed him. In cold blood, you killed him.
Barkley. Jared gave me the facts. The story, Sheriff. Her story. It was cold-blooded murder, and I'll prove it in court. Wally, you'll get your chance. There'll have to be an inquest, ma'am. I understand. Wally, I told the truth. I know exactly what happened. She invited him here. I heard it myself. She invited him to an ambush. That's not true. I, I swear it, that's not true. You heard Audra invite him in here? Jared, this can wait for the inquest. She invited him, and Evan turned her down because he knew what she had in mind. Wally, I know how you feel, but go home. This will all come out at the inquest. All right. We'll let it wait. We'll prove it in court. It was murder. Wally, I'm sorry, but I think you'd better stay and hear what I have to say. Sheriff, I realize this isn't exactly the place for an inquest, but perhaps it would be better for all of us to get it over and done with right here and now. Jared, you know better than that. We can't have a private hearing. A public inquest is exactly what I'd like to avoid, Fred. I don't see any reason for the rest of the state to hear what... what only we have to know. You think you can scare me with your lawyer's tricks? Wally, I know about Evan. I'd wondered for a long time why you kept sending him away to school. When all you really wanted was for him to run the ranch. Then after the fight at the party, after Heath got shot, I had to find out. That's why I came back tonight. Too late to save him. But not too late to save my mother and sister. And maybe in time to save you and Jenny from all... I'll get a lawyer. A good lawyer to fight you in court. Let's go, Jenny. Evan was leaving home again tonight, wasn't he? He was leaving town. At your request? A lot had happened. I thought he needed, deserved a vacation. Considering what had happened, why do you suppose he stopped by here? Because she invited him. Into this barn? Into an ambush? No, Wally. Maybe he was leaving town. Maybe he just wanted to say goodbye. Wanted to say goodbye so badly that he'd risk walking into what he believed was an ambush? You don't believe that? Evan had been in trouble a few times before, hadn't he? More than once. If you think you can bluff me, scare me with them papers. In fact, he'd been arrested quite a few times. He never spent a minute behind bars. Wasn't that because he was never charged with a crime that you couldn't take care of? Either by paying the fine or seeing to it that the charges weren't pressed? He set fire to a college dormitory back east. You paid to have it rebuilt, didn't you? All right, he has gotten into a few scrapes. Aggravated assault, $200 fine, six months probation. Assault with a deadly weapon. Sentence, one year, suspended. Evan Miles, expelled from college, turned over to the authorities. Charge, malicious mischief. A few scrapes, Wally. You're going to dig up every piece of dirt you can find, ain't you? I only hope and pray that I've found enough. Enough to convince you and the public prosecutor to let this thing end right here. Wally, I don't want these things aired in court, do you? For one, that business of setting fire to the college, that, that was a fake, a college boy prank. Boston, charge, assault with intent to kill. A prank, Wally? Evan's dead. Quit crucifying him. And they're still alive, Wally. What do you think you're doing to them? And to Jenny? Oh, stop it. Oh, God, stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. For the love of God, let him rest in peace. Let our son rest in peace. There's no more reason to lie. We knew him. We saw his sickness. We knew the terrible things he did. We both know it, don't we, Wally? Come on, Wally. Let's go home.
wonder what's keeping them. I thought they'd be home long before now. Well, stop worrying about it and concentrate on the game. Well, look who's talking about concentrating. That's a spade, not a club. Oh, sorry. The prosecutor decided there'd be no point in a public inquest. He ruled justifiable homicide. I'd say the sooner we put this whole thing behind us, the better. Whether Wally and Jenny Miles knew what Evan was, why did they defend him for so long? Wally answered that. We were only friends, but Evan was his son. And when your child is in trouble, you defend him. Without question, without reservation. The way I had to defend you when that moment came. There are times when there just isn't any other choice. Yes, it's true, from the chart to my heart. 